And I said to my Martian child, I said, child. Where is the Illudium Pew 38 modulator? <laughs> that little motherfucker was crazy, man. <laughs> you know, if he had been making that voice, he'd have been a better kid. <laughs> that would have been a better movie. It would have been a better movie. <laughs> In fact, if they had just done like, you remember when they did Space Jam? <laughs> yes. If they had made a Martian child that was actually Marvin the Martian, <laughs> yeah. John Cusack and Marvin the Martian, that would have been awesome, man. That would have been a great movie. Yeah, no. But this kid instead, he lives in a box. And he said, like, he thinks he's from Mars. I'm like, I don't know. It sounds like he thinks he's from the alleyway. Those are the people who live in boxes. <laughs> that dude walking around looking like some uh, Sesame Street or something. So like a cardboard box with some tennis shoes underneath and walking around. I'm like, come on, man. What kind of bullshit movie am I watching here? Actually, you know, you know what bugs me about this movie? Now, I don't want to give away too much. Is that I, they, there's a lot that bugs me about it, but you tell me what bugs okay, me. Okay, well, uh, let's tell about the movie first. Uh, John Cusack wants to adopt this kid. And you know this is based on a true story. Are you kidding? I, I'm, I'm dead serious. The movie just took a whole other level for me <laughs> then. I actually kind of <laughs> like it, knowing that there's a little shithead out there that crazy. <laughs> well, okay, it's I'm sure it's loosely based on a true story. But, there, I mean, it, it is, you know, at least inspired by a real science fiction writer who decided to adopt a kid. I, I, I don't know if this guy was a widower like John Cusack is, where, you know, him and his wife talked about adopting a kid. And, yeah, and you, it, know, it, it, you know, <laughs> five years later, after he's gotten over her death, he decides to adopt a kid. And since he, he's science fiction, he writes about planets, life on other planets. Hey, here's a little kid who thinks he's from Mars. He's got to be the one I'll adopt. Yeah, perfect fit. Yeah, whatever. That, this is stupid. I mean, this is this is like, this is the, the, the lamest kind of like, lifetime movie co cookie cut a lifetime movie that i could even imagine for something like this yeah i mean it goes beyond being like okay you've seen the trailer you pretty much know everything is going to happen like sure but they don't like stretch in any way it's it's just kind of out there almost like fill in the blanks by the numbers thing like oh you kind of know how these stories go so we're not going to really work hard at trying to develop it and when and when you really sit and think about it none of it really makes a lot of sense no in fact, I bet in the true story, like when they say loosely based, like we have this story where he adopts a kid and he loves him and he fights to keep him. They didn't tell you the true story where he took that motherfucker back to the adoption center. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> this boy's crazy. I can't do nothing with this. Yeah, yes, that's what, that's what kills me. Like, okay, this little kid, first off, they pick a really cute kid. What? First off, they pick a really cute kid. Uh, and then this, this little kid, okay, he's at like, it was like, you know, a little orphanage on the, on the corner. In in Los Angeles, and um, he, but he's got like a two hundred dollar haircut. And, <laughs> I mean, it pissed me off. They picked a cute kid because it's, it's just to make the audience go like, "Oh, he's so cute. How can you not adopt him?" Yeah. How? Because this little motherfucker's crazy. Yeah. The I mean, he's got some serious issues. He's got like some kind of. I mean, they they make it like, oh, it's abandonment issues. But no, nah, this this goes beyond that. This is this is some kind of autism this kid has and agoraphobia. And, and all kind of stuff that, like, even, like, a good family, a good family uh, uh, where the husband and wife were both psychologists would have trouble with him. But here's some doofus single dad who's like, I'll take this kid on because I was kind of weird in high school. This is not weird. This is nuts. Oh, no wonder. You're on the wrong mic. You, I was, like, wondering what was going on. You scooted your mic. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, that was your mic, and you scooted it back. So I was like, oh, I wonder well, why. Was moving right there. wonder why I can't hear. Okay, no, go ahead. You were sounding kind of quiet. But anyway, no, you make a point. Um, <clears throat> I was like, yeah, how can you not adopt this kid? Just turn around. Where you from, boy? Mars? Yeah, go take your ass <laughs> onto the back somewhere. <laughs> right. I mean, you ain't going home with me. Because that dude, you know, he's going to flip out one in the middle of the night, go get a kitchen knife, and he'll stab <laughs> your ass in your sleep. Well, well, that's I hate to be mean, but, you know. That's the thing. They, they love to paint behavioral problem kids in the movies like, look, the kid just has some issues, but all he needs is love, and that'll solve everything. No, all he needs is Ritalin. And maybe a straight jacket because in real life, these problems ain't solved by just a few hugs and buying him, you know, a, a happy meal at McDonald's. <laughs> no. And the thing is, I, you know, and look, I, OK, I can buy into a sappy message. Yes. Problem kid. We've seen movies where if we just love them and pay attention to them, things can be OK. But this dude, I don't trust him as a parent. Like the, the, the kid comes in, he starts tearing up shit. And instead of like disciplining him, he's like, 
oh, well, let's see what other dishes we can tear up in here. Let's see what else we can destroy. And it's like, come on, man. You yeah, know, that, that ain't being a parent. Yeah, but that's being a white parent. I mean, you got to you gotta face it. You know, white, white people control everything in the world except their kids. <laughs> They're the ones who let their kids t- talk to them any kind of way and cuss them out. I hate to say it, but I've been to the mall many times. I've seen a kid. I hate you. Not, not just I hate I fucking hate you, mom. I hate you. How old is that boy? Six? I'm like, God. Yeah, y'all talking about kids in the ghetto? You how you, how you yeah. talking to his mom? Well, kick his ass. Yeah. What's wrong with you? Yeah, you know, I would have broke a dish, and the next dish that would have broke wouldn't have been like us having a good time. The next few dishes would have been broke across my goddamn head. <laughs> I mean, I, look, but okay. The look, thing is, okay, this movie tries to say like, hey, you know what? This kid might have some problems, but he's found a man who wants to love him, and if you just let this guy love him, things will be all right. Oh, but they can't be all right. Because you got the evil social services guy who wants to come in and rain on their party. He doesn't know if John Cusack is the one for this kid. He might have to break them up. Now, first off, yeah, John Cusack is not the one to, to fix this kid. But, hey, he's the one who adopted this kid when nobody else is doing it. Social services is always so busy with kids who are getting really abused. You know, the, the kids in Oprah's <laughs> South African school. Yeah. Getting, you know, if they found somebody who actually wanted that kid, they would leave them alone. They, 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 would, they would drop out long enough to say, like, you ain't fucking this kid, are you? No, sir. All right. Carry good, on. Hey, good. Good. Hey, that's fine with me. I don't know, but they tried to act like it was like such a. Uh, a weird scene for him. I guess it was because like they had that scene where they were breaking dishes. Yeah. And I thought that dude kind of handled that cool. The guy from social services because he came in because if I would have came up and be like, what the fuck is going on in here? He came in just like, oh, can I just speak to you for a moment, please? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But he's just like, oh, you know, I'm just trying to teach him that I, I love him more than I love these things. All right. Well, just. But he actually made a good point. He was like, you want to be a friend and not a parent. True. You know, no, 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 no. He did make a good point. It would, I mean, I would have made a stronger point. I'd be like, that's all right, too. But, like, you know, you got to beat his ass if he's going to start breaking your shit. Yeah, let, yeah we've been not ever having any kids. Because <laughs> <laughs> apparently we, we ain't the ones. We ain't, just got, we ain't got the patience. Give me the box. Leave the kid behind. <laughs> and take the shoes, too. But, uh, no, this is, uh, man, I, like, you know, for the movie itself, though, I'll you know, social messages aside and sappy little scenes and whatnot. The movie just feels cheap. It is it, shot cheap, cheap and, yes. it, and it feels cheap. And it just, and it's so predictable that you can sort of take one or the other. If there's some element of surprise in there, but none of this is surprising. Hell, this movie's so cheap. Who do they get to play? John Cusack's sister, his oh, real life sister. Oh yeah. <laughs> He's like, like, you know, you got two for one deal there. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Joan Cusack. <laughs> You know, they, they called him up and like, hey, man, when you here, can you just call your sister, come over, read some lines real quick? She probably, she probably thought she was rehearsing. <laughs> you know what? That's true. They just say, like, I just need you to help me run lines. And he yeah. just filmed it the whole time. We're going to be hiding behind that closet right there. I'm going to have the camera roll. Don't tell her, though. We don't want to pay for that shit. And I don't know how many movies, you know, uh, John Cusack and Amanda Peet have been in together. What was that? What was that? I know there was that one. They went another movie together? With all the, all the personalities in the, in the hotel, in the motel with Ray Liotta. A oh. crazy movie that everybody liked except me. Identity. Identity. Thank uh, Cyrus you. over there in the background. <laughs> He's on the computer. But yeah, it was Identity, yes. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, so, so she's the dead wife's sister who they got some kind of spark going but won't ever get on yeah, that. And it's, yeah. just, that's just, it's, just, it's just a dumb sub, subplot that go, kind of goes nowhere. And, she's just there to hmm. say like, hey, well, everything you're doing is great and you should be with this kid and rah-rah and go-go and you got everything it takes to make a parent. And it's like, Bitch, you don't have any kids. How do you know? Yeah, get on out of here. How you going to tell me? You know, the thing is, is that he, she's in there. John Cusack's in here. I, there's a lot of people in this movie who just feel like they have nothing to do. So the personalities are kind of sucked out of them. I, I, I'm, really tr- I'm really trying to find something good to say about this movie because I, I think that, well, okay, let me just say this. And it's not really a compliment. I think that this movie is just so bland which is just a, a mean way of saying it's just right there in the middle that is going to please some people who aren't looking for that much. True. And, and so if, if, and for that reason, I'll give it a rental because it will please those people. If you watch it at home and you're not asking for a whole, uh, for a whole lot, those people that you say like lifetime movies, they're going to be the people who will like this movie. You know what? I, I, I got to tell you, this is one of those movies. There's some movies that I see and maybe I don't like them that much at first, but then, as I go home and think about them, or I might talk to you guys, I'm like, you know what? This did have some merit, and I like it better than when I first saw it. This is not one of those movies. <laughs> this is one of those movies where, like, the further I'm away from it, the more I actually begin to hate it. This is actually one of my least favorite movies of the year because there was so much, you know, talent acting-wise in it, 
and it was just so cookie cutter and so bland. And I couldn't agree. I couldn't disagree with the messages more in this movie. I, to me, this was some old bullshit. Okay. Hey, <clears throat> you know what? I can't argue with you on that. I, I see. I mean, I, I really had to grab to find something good to say about this movie. I mean, this movie makes me angry when I think about it, to be honest with you. Damn, man. Come on, man. Ain't that, it, it, don't let it do that to you. It, it, it it's does. the Martian child, man. You better than that. <laughs> you above that. I'm telling you, man, all you need to do was take off his belt and beat that kid's ass. You know what? You notice how that kid went with a black family because that movie would have been over with really quick. They'd be what? like, boy, you ain't from Mars. Get up off of there. Well, they would have been scared, too. Black people would be like, my boy, think he's from Mars. Mm-mm. Shit, leave his ass here. Now, now, you know, when, when black people have crazy people in their family, they don't take them to psychologists. <laughs> they, may, they may be locked up in their room, or they just have them go around and wear a helmet. <laughs> but they ain't going to spend no money on his treatment. He's just going yeah. to be crazy Marvin. That's we have all been to is. so many homes where, like, we see, you see a Negro walking through the living room just looking at everybody, <laughs> hair all uncombed. <laughs> Beard grody, like who is that? Oh man, that's that Uncle just, Charlie. That's, yeah, that's yeah, that's, 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 uh, that's Uncle Mark. You know, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like, he just he going to his room. Go on to your room, man. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah, you know that was that kid would have been the white version of that. <laughs> yeah, we got him just to wash the car and do the lawn. <laughs> <laughs> nah, it's some old bullshit. Some old bullshit. Even after talking, that, we can't even make up this movie. Like joke about it to make it better for you. <laughs> no, we can't like form the Martian child two in our minds. <laughs> Imagine this white dude in the ghetto walking around it's funny because in the end scene they almost die and i thought you know what if they had died in this scene i would have bumped it up to a, a rental <laughs> i'd be a great movie man if like john cusack took him back and a black family adopted him and that dude grew up to be the white dude walking around to get all crazy and everybody like who that white dude walking there like, oh that's martian man <laughs> <laughs> he'd be like he'd be like the white radio exactly. <laughs> instead of radio he'd be like Martian <laughs> anyway alright I guess we there you go Hollywood call us Jesus. <laughs> what the hell's going on what there? you looking at over there you looking what you looking at porn what the hell is that I don't know Cyrus is over here looking at a, a picture of a woman with some rollers in her head and a naked man standing on a pile of wood oh those are photos from his family reunion yeah. oh okay oh mom that's Martian. 